it has truly blessed you and ministered to your heart and your deepest need today. We give God the praise and the glory for that. And I thank God for our praise and worship team. Great job, amen. And Brother Curtis, amen, for our leading our worship time and, uh, and uh, being in to Michael Daniel to help prepare to do the uh, communion service. We do thank and, uh, and truly acknowledge and praise God for that right there. And to all of God's precious people, it's good to see you today. It's good to be in your presence today. It's good to be a pastor, to share God's word with you, to encourage you. See that you walk closer and closer with God each and every day and be faithful to your calling and knowing that through everything, God is always with us every step of the way. And I just pray today that everything we're doing, the singing, the prayers, the scripture reading, the communion, the preaching, that you will in some unique way be aware of God's presence. I just want you just to bask in that day, just to say, God, I want you just to let you just love him for a while. That's what's about it, man. And also make sure if you want, if you want to see my, our new friends, if you want to know more about our church, uh, please visit our website, www.gfgbcrealto. And like us on Facebook and Instagram, way to follow us and keep in touch with the church. And, uh, and also, if you're a first-time uh, friend here today, make sure you get a, a little blue card, fill the blue card out, allows us to connect with you and connect back to us. So we can keep informed of this coming up and, and just you know, be aware of the church events for those on the church. So go on out there. Also, Throw it out. The ushers will make sure that you get a, a, a nice gift. Just so we appreciate you and thank God for you for uh, being with us today and allowing God's presence to bless you and encourage a very rich and uplifting manner today. And also make sure that you, those who were paying the sanctuary on uh, September September 21st, so make sure all men, women, boys, and girls. If you can hold a paintbrush, you can uh, put your name on the list, amen, to help paint the sanctuary on uh, September the 21st. And also, Pam is not here right now, but uh, on next Saturday, we're having a church picnic, and she needs some men, muscle-bound men, who will help set everything up at, at the park on next Saturday morning. So if you want to do that, please, please get in touch with Pam Puyo and let her know that you'll be at the park, I think at 8 o'clock in the morning, help her set things up and get organized for the great picnic coming up on, on next Saturday. So be mindful of that there. And I hate, uh, also, uh, I know some of you may have came in late, didn't get this here, but I, I tried to hand up last time, make sure everybody has a hand up last week here. If you lost it, just please, uh, was it a quick moment, I actually want to pass. just raise your hand real quickly, and we'll make sure you get one, if you don't have one, you miss one. This people who missed this, this by hand it will help you to keep track of the message today. So if you didn't get one, don't have one, just raise your hand. I should kindly will pass one out to you briefly and get this here taken care of. And then we'll go into the Word of God this morning. Joe Samson Park, right on Randall, between uh, Bruce, between uh, Cactus and uh, I think uh, Sycamore Street, right? Randall, Randall, Randall and Sycamore Street, right? Randall and Cactus, and Cactus so big Randall Park, right there. And I think in your bulletin, it, it's in your bulletin, right? There. I think it's at eight or ten o'clock in the morning, to about four o'clock. We have a great time, great fun. Everybody's invited in here, family, friends. Everybody's invited to come out and just go really have, have a great time with fellowship and, and enjoyment. And also, I family want to thank you for your prayers and support as we went this past couple days up in Oregon, that beautiful country there, to see Amaya and uh, encourage her in volleyball. It's 
scholarship in school. It was a great time seeing her. She's happy to see us. We're happy to see her. It was really a great tremendous blast. And just thank you for your prayer and support that we had a safe trip up there and back. It was truly a awesome blessing and a really a wonderful time of being there. And I think that I got to do that for that one. Oh, for sure, I need to, I don't get to hit our book before I forget. So one more quick thing here. Uh, uh, on, on our website, we have a new uh, page there, and it's called Job Opportunities. And if you go to our website and click on Jobs, it's a whole list of different jobs, the number of the church, different ways you can apply for, all of this right. Go to our website, www.gfgbcreality.org, and click on there. Tab that says uh, jobs and whole thing of job list and post right there. You click on click the job thing right there and take it to the place and how to apply for it, etc. So, so if you know any family, friends who are seeking employment, you can go to our website, click on that job tab right there and pop all these listings of jobs or you know from uh, just different locations in the end of the empire around that you can apply for those various jobs there. So I want people to know that you can, you can uh, ask for the job to just uh, by going to our website and applying for that there. And I think I got all I think I got all those things out the, out the way now. Now we can now we can kind of redirect. <laughs> Amen. Uh, refocus now back on the worship. We can't do things like sometimes those things are necessary to kind of get out of the way so I don't forget because I want to make sure the last thing that you remember is what thus says the Lord. Amen. That would be a blessing. Today, we're going to conclude on a series on a biblical worship, but a closing part of the acceptable aroma of worship from Exodus 30, 34 to 38. Let's pray. Father, how great are you? We shout that every day of our lives. How great are you, God? And you are so very worthy of every ounce of our worship to you. You, O oh God, deserve it all. And we just pour our heart in praise to you and sing of your glorious wonders. We just want to see you high and lifted today, Father. And to see your glory build this place. We pray, God, for heart for worship today. A <coughs> heart that's seeking after you and desiring more and more of you. We come today, God, to turn our hearts, our face toward you and not our back. We pray, God, for anyone today who is not a believer in a death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and has thoroughly and completely committed their life to following Him, that they, by your Spirit, will draw that person to you. Even a person, God, who has gotten away from following you, that you would draw them back when you walk in the presence of God, back in your fold. If someone in need of a church family, they've got to make that decision today. Honor you. And now, Lord, may our eyes be open to see your glory. Open our ears, O oh God, to hear your voice. Open our mouth to praise you, O oh God. Open our minds to be transformed by you. Open our hearts, O oh God, be true, true change. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The acceptable aroma of worship. So, and that, that is why we come together on Sunday mornings for corporate worship. We worship individually all week, all day long. Everything we do, say, and think is an act of worship. It's worship. Everything we do, say, and think 
an act of responding to God's love for us. Responding to God, act of worship. That's what God wants from us. In fact, I can mind myself over again that we are created to worship Him. God created you and me to worship Him. And worship, I, it is not to change God, it's to change us. It's to help us. It's to bless us. There's so much happening in our life when we begin to worship God in the fullness. It has a way to really change and transform our lives. And that is why the enemy, the devil, tries to distract us from worshiping God. Because the enemy, the, the devil knows that when we really, from our heart, worship God, who he is, his greatness, his glory, his power, and what he has done for us. The enemy knows that we will be victorious and will live a fruitful and blessed life. So if he can get us distracted worshiping people, places, pleasures, and possessions, he got us pretty much defeated right there. But God deserves all of our worship. All about worship. In Exodus chapter 30, we talk about the acceptable aroma of worship. And when we read Exodus chapter 30, 30, 34 through 38, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Take for yourself spices, stack day, and onacha, and galbanum spices with pure frankincense. There they shall be equal part of each. With it you shall make incense, a perfume, the work of a perfumer, salted, pure, and holy. You shall beat some of it, it very fine and put it before the testimony in the tent of meetings. For I will meet you in the most holy to you. The incense which you shall make, you shall not make in the same proportions for yourselves. It shall be holy to you for the Lord. Whoever shall make any like it, use a perfume, shall be cut off from his people. The acceptable aroma of worship. And last week we, we talked about three we talked about areas right here about how God uses in the Old Testament but all five of his senses to uh to worship, they use our sight, they use uh, hearing. You know, they, they saw the beauty of the color, the color meant something, they saw the color, and then there they was hearing, they heard the music, music being sung, they heard the music, they touched the animals symbolizing that it was the animals taking their place. There was smell, the, the aroma being the incense being burned, that was the smell, the green smells right there. And then there was taste, they had festival symbol where they, they ate a lot of food and stuff. All those things were celebrated. But in the day modern church worship services, we probably only use two. And that is our sight, what we see, and we hear. We hear the music, we see the people, we see the building and things like that there. But far as taste, smell, we don't get too much in those areas when it comes to worshiping God. But the Old Testament, the saints. The Hebrew produced all of those there to worship God. So when, when, when they worship God, it was, it was a beautiful thing, beautifully taking place. And God just said, that is so beautiful, so fragrant. God just honored that. But when it did not worship God right away, God was very, very displeased with that. And so we looked at those areas, right? We looked at uh, the ingredients of worship. We looked at uh, all the different means right there. We also looked at praise God. We looked at the uh, at the handouts right. We also noticed we looked at fears last week. Along with that, there we looked at the frankincense, which was made the intermingling of the incense, how it's mixed together. And so they, they were going to look at. We'll start. Sorry, we're going to start the day on the intermingling of the, of the incense. God wants us to worship. 
have nothing else to do with us here. We created to worship God. And just because we come to church in the building and gather and hear some song, hear the word being preached, have communion, shake hands, sing some songs, that does not mean that we have worshiped God, people. <laughs> Remember, Jesus said, I praise that in Matthew 15, 9, the people that worship in vain with their lips, but their heart is far from it. We must make sure that we worship God, that our heart and our lips are on the same page and on the same sentence. Because sometimes we're not, we're not the same page with our, with our lips, but our heart is far from God. It must be on the same page at all times with God. And so, and so God said, I want, I want worship to me to be meaningful, to have purpose, amen, and to really, really honor who God is. And so God gave Moses very specific instructions of how to worship him. So look at the inner of the incense right now. Verse 34 to 36 says here, it says here, Then the Lord said to Moses, Take for yourself spices, sacte, and anachia, and galbon spice with pure parentheses. There's the equal part each. With ye shall make incense, perfume to the work of the perfume shall be salted, pure, and holy. You shall beat some of the fine, very fine, and put part before the testimony in a tent of meeting where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy. Amen. See, these verses here, these verses here, tells us about the ingredients of the incense. What goes in, amen. They also tell us how the incense, how, how, how they mix together. Don't just do it any kind of way. God has specific instructions how to mix that, amen. The ingredients teach us why the Lord needs to be worshipped. And, and the, the mix of the ingredients, it also tells us how we are to approach God and worship Him. God is high and holy and exalted, and we cannot just come before God and just to worship God any old kind of way. He is not a God like that. And so we learn two things. We learn about the personal side of worship. Number two, the personal side of worship. See, the instructions given here speak of the personal nature of worship. Worship is personal. See, so when we come before the Lord to worship, praise God. Hallelujah. When we come before God, we must, there are two ways, well, there are probably more than two, but at least there are two ways I want to share with right now of how we ought to approach God when we come to worship Him. Yeah, I, I, I was just thinking the other day, if anything, I'd like to be known just as a worship of God. One who worships God. Say neighbor. Don't do anything else. Let me be known as one who worships God. Not worshiping places, possessions, pleasure, but worshiping God. And the Bible says, in verse 35, it says the words right here. It says, With you shall make incense a perfume for the work of the Lord. Perfume a salt, pure and holy. Pure and holy. It's been put together pure and holy, mixed with salt. And see, this here speaks of the condition of our heart. Holy. It speaks of the condition of our heart. In other words, if we are not in a right relationship with God, we cannot approach Him to worship Him. Think about that, people. If we are not in the right relationship with God, we cannot approach him to worship. A lot of people say, well, you know, I went to church, but so what? What was there? What was it all about? Well, when you're in a right relationship with God, something is said, something is spoken, something is something that will touch your heart, and you will know that. Can I get a witness? Amen. You will know you're in a right relationship with God, amen. And so we cannot, we cannot, cannot approach God unless you're in a right relationship with him. Look at this right here. Uh, just suppose, just suppose somebody, you know somebody, and let's say uh, uh, you owe them $1,000, okay? 
and, and, and you and you promise to pay it back to him, okay? This is maybe hundred bucks, okay? And you promise to pay it back to him, okay? And, and, and you done told lies about why you couldn't pay it back, hey, amen? I'll do it next, I'll do it next, but I ain't got it right now. And you know, and you know right there, there's a breakage right there. You promised to pay it back, but you did And you know, when you see that person, it's hard to approach him, right? Yeah. You try to duck around. Because you know you owe them something and you have not made it right, amen. And therefore, you kind of shy away from a person and say, hey, how you doing there? You will not, hey, how you doing? Oh, I love you so. You will not do that. You will, you said, come on, you will go the other way. Amen. Because you owe that person something. And the same way of worshiping God, when our heart is not right with God, it's hard to pray, say, God, I just love you so much. God's so movie, though. No, you don't. Oh, God, I just praise you. No, you don't. We must be in the right relationship with God and worship Him. So the Bible says, amen. So, so see what I'm saying? When there's sin in our lives, God will close His ears to our prayers. <coughs> Psalm 66, 18 says it that way, amen. If you hide him in the heart, God will not hear us. And he will close the door of worship. Isaiah 59, 2 tells us, your sins are separated you from God. <coughs> so if we want to worship God, we must come before him with a holy heart. A holy heart. Again, that's why the enemy does not want to worship God, because it takes dedication, devotion to worship God. We must come with a holy heart. Look at uh, Psalm 139. You know, Psalm 139, verse 23. It says these words right here. 23 and 24. Think about it. We come to worshiping God on Sunday morning, whatever it may be. Look at these words right here. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there's any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. I'm not gonna come up and say I, I say that prayer every time I come to church. We gotta think, think of those times when the church, Lord God, I'm coming to worship you, Lord God. I search for even 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 we bow down to pray our morning prayers. Start out there, God, search me, oh God. Then the women that's right, God, lead me in the way of everlasting. Search me, O oh God. So we need to come before God in the right, that right spirit, holy. It's a challenge. It's a challenge, people. The dish of heart must be right unless you God. This second, secondly said, not only come before God holy, but come before God humbly. 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 It said they were to take some of the incense. And beat it very small. I must say very small. Yeah. Very small. What that means is praise it. If we would approach the Lord, we must first be holy and then come for him humbly. Mm. Mm. Not boasting, not proud, not arrogant. But God, I just humbly come before your presence. No pride, no pretense in our hearts. We cannot come to God boasting, look how good I've been, look what I've done, and all these things here, our abilities. We must come before God and assume says, God, I'm weak, and I'm mean, I'm powerless, and apart from you, God, I have nothing, can do nothing, and am nothing, apart from you, God. Humbly, God, we are absolutely nothing. We must become a God. God, I'm broken. I want to worship you, God, and honor you. Sometimes we, we come to church, you know, and really feel that we're all full of ourselves. We can't come to God. Humble huh? acknowledging who God is. It says in, in uh, Psalm 5 7, Psalm 5 7, 5, 7, it says here, But as for me, by your abundant mercies, 
I will enter your house, and you're holy to uh, bow in reverence to you. God, I, I come today, God, just in the abundance of your tender mercies. Not what I have done, but because of you, God, I can come to your presence. I lift my hands and worship you. I don't deserve it. I've not earned it, God. But God, I come to worship you. You are creator, you are Lord, and you are God. Pour out my heart to you. Sometimes we, we can we can come thinking that you know we're uh, so this and so that. If you look, I think it's in a remember the story in, in the book of uh, Luke, with the story of hey, Luke where uh, two men went to the temple to pray. The uh, tax collector and the Pharisee. The Pharisee prayed, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like that publican over there. I fast twice a week. I give this, I do that. He all proud, look what, I, look what I've done. And that poor public sports instance, he like, looked down and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that's how we come to God. God, be merciful to me, I'm a sinner. God, be merciful to me. That's how we approach God. Humbly to worship God. Because God deserves it all. He's the great God of the universe. Humbly speak, humbly come before God. Not all puffed up with pride. Humbly. Because sometimes, you know, and we, in church all, all over the world, myself included, we, we can come to God, you know, God, I've, I've done all those, I've done that, and not about that. You know, uh, this morning, uh, my wife and my daughter, and my son, we're going through a series on a new verse uh, Bible. It's called uh, "Worshiping God," and it has some really, has some really dynamic, uh, life-changing devotional thoughts and scriptures about worshiping God and, and the power to worship. I mean, it, it it is just really, really uh, exciting to, to go through that and, and to see the various uh, ways and how. To approach it. It, it is just really my own way. It has it has really been kind of a reinforced what I've been sharing with you about having a heart to worship God and to worship Him. You know, and, and one of the things this morning was in the scripture was uh, from from uh, from uh, Psalm one hundred three, verse eighty nine. And you know, anytime I read that verse, sometimes you read a verse and, and you kind of skip over. Then you begin to think about that, and you really, really hit me. Simply said, uh, Lord. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded me according to my iniquities. People just think about that whole thing right there. God, you have not dealt with me according to my sins, nor rewarded me according to my iniquities. Just think, if God would deal with me and you according to our sins and reward us according to our iniquities, who shall be able to stand? Mm -hmm. We come before God in the multitude of sin and mercy. And God, I thank you. And I say, God, I thank you. Lord, I really thank you. I'm so grateful, God. That you have not dealt with me according to my sin or rewarded me according to my iniquities. Because the Bible says, Great is your loving kindness. Remember, the last everlasting is your loving kindness. And that is such a great God that we serve. Who would not worship and serve a God like that? Amen. Give God some praise. Right? Give God some praise. And let me know. And let me look at this God. Thank you. And you're not dealt with me according to my sins. But every day we fall short. Every day we mess up. But God is so merciful and so kind. So when I come to worship, I say, God, I worship you. Not arrogantly and not proud, not boastful, because God, I am what I am by, the, by your grace and by your mercy. 
We just cannot take it for granted. Oh, bless God. So nothing else, nothing else, people. Just let that verse right there just saturate in your spirit. Psalm 103, verse 89. God, Lord, Jesus Christ, you have not dealt with me, with me, not that person, that person, but me personally, God. You have not dealt with me, with me. Not my brother, not my sister, not my, with me, God. You have not dealt with me according to my sins. My failures, my flaws, my mistakes. And you're not rewarded me, God, yes. because of my iniquities. Yes, if that don't catch you right, won't nothing else will. Yes. We can worship God, amen. Yes. That's a gracious God, amen. Yes, yes. That's a gracious God, amen. Yes. That's why it comes for him holy and humbly. It's all you, God. Next, number B. It also speaks about the persistent side of worship. The persistent side of worship. Verse 36, it says here. Verse 36. Commanded that some incense be placed before the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, above the Ark, over the mercy seat, where God met with his people, the incense before the ark was a symbol that the worship was to be continual and persistent. The incense was always, was, was always be ready to be offered in worship before the Lord. In other words, worship was the defining characteristics of the people of God. In other words, the people were saying, worship is what defines you and me. Worship. Say, neighbor. Amen. Worship. For what defines you and me. Hallelujah. Worship. I'm a worship of God. That, that's what makes me different. But I worship God Almighty. See, uh, the people of God, we as believers, we have to be marked by persistent worship. Everywhere, everywhere we go is an opportunity to worship God. Individually or corporately here on Sunday morning, an opportunity to worship God. I'm saying, people, uh, a believer, there's something wrong with a person who possesses no desire to worship God. You say you're a Christian, you have no desire to worship God. Come on. Something is wrong, amen. You have no desire to pray, no desire to read God's word, no desire to sing praise to him. He is worried about persistent worship, people. Persistent worship, not inconsistent worship, but persistent worship. Every day of our lives is to be spent in worship God who redeemed us by his grace. Every day of our lives, worshiping God. Worshiping Him. Worshiping Him. Continual, persistent. When I was, uh, as I was, uh, as we was traveling back on the plane from Portland yesterday, and I was uh, going home with this and preparing my heart and mind and spirit, and then I recently said uh, about uh, a passion for God's presence. And the Lord spoke and said, you know, let's add one more thing to it. And that is right here. And it's something that uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge to me, but maybe also be a challenge to you also. And this right here. I want a persistent passion for his presence. I want a persistent passion for his presence. Everything I do is that I want to know that his presence is right there with me. A persistent passion. And, and you know what that means? You know what that really means? It means losing my appetite for worldly pleasures 
places and possessions and having a deeper hunger for the things of God. You know, and uh, I think the problem with uh, many believers, people think, is that we really, 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 some, some, I'm not saying about this, some people don't have a persistent passion for the presence of God. Having this, God, God, I want you with me. I want to be aware of you. Everything I do, say, and think. A persistent passion for the things of God. Just think about that, people. A persistent passion for his presence. That means losing an appetite. And people, we, we have a, an appetite for a lot of things. People have an appetite. I mean, I, I think about it right now. Here's this fall season right now. And to many areas and many people, football becomes a God. Can I the witness? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It is a yeah. God. And people, yeah. they have to oh, yeah. When football season is over, it's like they're going into withdrawals. <laughs> they're going into depression. Yeah. And they just can't wait for it to start back up again. And now it's like coming to that, that passion right there. They, they, they give the whole weekends for being there on that TV set, watching their football or whatever it be. That, that is their passion. They have a persistent passion for that right there. I mean, all year long, even I see they're still talking about football. And sport, a persistent passion. They, they just want to be able to watch right in the midst see what's going on. And want to have that same passion as believers for the things of God. Amen. I, I mean, it's like, it's like, like they just, when, when this Sunday's over, when football, when Sunday's football's over, they just can't wait for next Sunday to watch it again. All we want to talk about what team the army does it. Both of them talk about this yes. team and yes. that team and this and that and all week long, amen. Yes. And come Sunday when they're ready to sit down here and watch it again. Mm -hmm. As believers, great is our God. Greater than any football team. Greater than any basketball team. Greater than any basketball team. Greater than any anything. Yes. He's our God is great, amen. Yes. And what I say, God, I just can't wait to get back next Sunday with your people to worship God. Hallelujah. Here, right? I can't wait to get back. All we want, we're talking about God, about Jesus Christ. And here's something that you know, I, 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 God gave me this other day, and I just can't wait to get to try it out the very first chance I get. Amen. And I want you to think about this also. You know, people say, you know, uh, they're coming to see you. Uh, uh, your friends say, you know, uh, what did you do this weekend? Right? You've asked the question, what did you do this weekend? You've asked the question, what uh, where'd you go this weekend? Uh, where are you going this weekend? Uh, any of your friends ever asked you that question? Yes. What are you done this weekend? Where are you going this weekend? And here's, the, here's the, my response. I'm trying to work on this right now. I'm trying to, God gave me this and say the right here. This weekend, I'm going to be with some of the most loving, most kind, most wonderful people in the whole wide world. What about you? Yeah. And, and, and where are you going this weekend? This weekend, I'll be with some of the most kind, most loving, most caring, most wonderful people in the whole wide world. Who are you with this weekend? <laughs> Who where those folks at? Where did folks at? At Greater Faith Grace Bible Church. Come and join us. I think that's my work, amen. I think that's my work, amen. I think that it's just my work. Who said this weekend? I was the most kind, most loving, most grace, most wonderful, most supportive in the whole wide world. Where? Where are those folks at? At Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church. Amen. Where are you going this week? Where's that, where's that plan the weekend? I plan to do the most loving, the most kind, the most gracious, the most, most wonderful in the whole wide world. Where are those folks at? Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church. <laughs> Come and join in. And, and I just can't wait for the ask that this week that I have to just tell them. Hey, but I, I think God's going to give you the chance and then you can ask God for God will do it, amen. Yes, and I want to charge some of you right now. You may, you may have you may have a word a different way, but try something like that. But ask you, where you going this week and what you did on Sunday? Let them know, amen. That just might bless you, amen. You got to be in all truth. You, you, you just tell the truth, amen, huh? Yes. Praise God, amen. amen. Well, time is about to skip right now. 
I said I'd get through this, amen. A couple more things right here. Let me look at also the proportional side of worship. Verse 34 says that ingredient of incense would be mixed equal amounts. This speaks about the fact that our worship should be balanced and proportional. I mean, we don't go off and attend just saying one thing and leave something else uh, uh, unspoken about. In other words, some people emphasize the life of Christ while they talk a little about his death. That balance right there. Some people focus on the love of God, but not much about the wrath of God. Some folks talk about heaven, but don't talk about hell. Some folks talk about heaven, but don't talk about hell. I'll be a balance right there, amen. Some people focus on getting from God and not getting to God. Amen. Worship should be balanced, amen. Equally important, amen. <clears throat> we have to recognize that it's important to have a balanced part of worship there. And then finally, number three, the instructions of the incense. 37, 38. The instructions of the incense. It said right here. Amen. The incense we shall make, you shall not make in the same proportions for yourself. It shall be holy to you to the Lord. Whoever shall make any like it as a unit perfume shall be cut off from his people. Amen. So the instructions for the incense. See, once the incense was prepared, it was it was employed in the worship of God. Once the incense was all prepared, it was to use to worship God Him alone. See, this reminds us that worship is to be given to God alone. Amen. Not worldly pleasures, not worldly possessions. <coughs> not worldly place, but to God and Him alone. God created us to worship Him. No person or possession or pastime deserves our worship. Yes, we can, we can have those things. Yes, we need those things, but they are not to be worshipped. They are not to take place of worship, amen. The nature of worship is, clear, is defined in these verses. The instruction number one is definite. It is definite. The instruction of definite, it says in verse 37. You shall, the incense you shall make, you shall not make in the same proportion for yourself definite. It was to be holy for the Lord. The incense was to be used for no other purpose than to worship Almighty God. It belonged to Him and to Him alone. Again, this reminds us that worship belongs to God yes. and God alone. What did Jesus say with St. Timothy? Draw it and worship him. Jesus said, What? It is written, devil, I shall worship the Lord thy God, him only shall I worship. So, when you are tempted, we all get tempted to worship worldly pleasures, possessions, places, and people. Just say, In the name of Jesus, I'm not going to worship these things, I'm going to worship God Almighty. See, we, we live in an age when God receives very little genuine biblical worship. In fact, people, most people worship themselves in these days. People just worship themselves. They bow down all these different idols and stuff. We've got to worship God and Him alone. So we ask ourselves, what fills our heart? What fills our life? What fills our time? Those are the things that we worship. True worship belongs to God and God alone. He is beloved. He is to be served and exalted. He is to be honored for every moment of our lives. Every moment. And that's a challenge, people. When we get bombarded every day, all kinds of stuff coming our way, we've got to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. He deserves to give him all the praise and all the glory. And then secondly, the instructions are deadly. Verse 38, it says here, Whoever shall make any like it to use a perfume shall be cut off from his people. God says that any other use of the incense will bring his judgment upon the guilty person. In the Bible, the story in the book of uh, Leviticus where uh, Aaron's son, Nadab and Bahu, came before the Lord and brought some strange fire. It went against God's command concerning worship, and God killed him outright. 
this serves to teach us that false words always lead to destruction. And you say, well, uh, how about the... I said, hmm, pastor, let's see people right now. The words we got false, they don't just die right away. What happens when we die in our relationship with God, that something dies right there. We can't relate to God destroy because we do the false worship. We don't go and put us close to God. The relationship dies. Spiritually die. That relationship, amen. So we want to worship. So we want to invite the general God to life. Just start worshiping other gods. Offer our praise to them. And God said, you're doing that right there? I'm cutting you off spiritually. You're not going to feel connected to me. Because you have something else before me. And that's, that's not good. So God is saying to us today, Lord, search my heart. Am I offering strange fire and incense? Help me understand, oh God, when it happened, I always, always worship you in the right spirit. And before I close on a couple things I want to say right now. You don't have to answer this right here, but just tell me to write it down and think about this here. If you could ask God for anything, if right now, right in the day, God came and just person and said, look here, ask me for anything you want. Absolutely anything. What would you ask God for? Just think of it, okay? For God's sake. Ask me for anything. What would you ask God? I know we have a lot of thoughts running through our minds that we ask God. That's the thing you and God that you're asking for. And I know the range you run from a better job, things like that, you people say things like that. That's, I don't want you to think about that, amen. And I may come one time and just kind of, you know, I may one time just kind of challenge to ask you what you ask God, but kind of see where you're at, amen, one on one. What would you ask God? Ask God anything. What would you ask God for? We'll come to a close. Excuse me. Close that. We have to think like this. Only you 